Okay. Hello and welcome to the My Hero Academia podcast. This is episode 12. 12? No, this is episode 112. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot two zeros. Um, I'm back again after not being here for a month. Joining us again, thankfully, after a little bit of a while, is Marion. Hello. Thanks for having me again. Thank you for joining us. We also have James. Hi. And Gary. Hey there. So first of all, we have uh, just a few pieces of news. So the first one is a little bit of a sceptical piece of news. So there might be a live stream of the uh, the live action play, My Hero Academia play. It came out in 2019 and there were more scheduled releases of it this year from March to April, but most of them were cancelled because of COVID. But they're hoping that July the 17th of this year, well, not of next year, they're hoping July 17th that they'll be able to do a live show and hopefully, uh, they don't consider if it's on Zoom or if it'll be on Skype, but they might be able to stream it live. So that was news was released on the Crunchyroll website. So if you want to follow it, you can follow it there. And then maybe, maybe more people in just Japan will be able to watch it, but I'm sceptical, but we'll see. Nice. I'm also not sure about the time difference. The time difference from Japan to the US has got to be shorter. I think it's like they're like um they're in the next day. Uh it's usually like 12 or 13 hours depending on like uh what coast you are. Uh so in in, in US, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully some people will be able to watch it. Cool. And Marion, your news? Oh, yeah. So I play a mobile game called Puzzles and Dragons. And uh, in Japan, they're going to have a, a, col- a collaboration with My Hero Academia. And technically, it's starting today. Uh, in Japan, it's uh, the 13th, a Monday. And from like 10 a.m. On, on July 13th all the way till uh, 10 a.m. of the 27th of July, they're going to have, like, a two-week-long collaboration where you can, like, roll for characters. Um, you get, like, you can get, like, some free uh, cards, basically, where I think one of them is uh, Deku um, in, like, his, like, season one, like, hero costume. And there are some, like, free-to-play characters that you could basically grind for. Um, of them, I think you can get overhaul hawks and airy and besides that the characters that you can get from like the 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 gacha machine or whatever are um you can get uh deku bakugo uraraka ida todoroki uh asui kirishima mirio all might uh eraserhead endeavor uh sir night eye uh tomura uh, I forgot his name. Um, Dobby. Uh, wow. That's quite <laughs> and, the myriad of characters, isn't it? Yeah, and um, if uh, I, I I'm assuming like most of you don't play this game. Uh, but uh, if you're listening and like you're you're in like an English speaking territory or whatever, you can get the game. Um, usually Japanese collabs for this game come within like two months. Um, we've gotten like most of like the Japanese collabs. I think the only one as of late that we haven't gotten like right away was uh, one that they had for like uh, Mickey Mouse and Friends, like uh, like a Disney collab. Um, but besides that, we've gotten plenty of like the Shonen Jump ones, like uh, Gintama, um, Yu-Gi-Oh, Duel Monsters, uh, a bunch of different things. So I think it's really likely that this one is gonna come to like. Uh, the global server. Uh, you can look forward to that in like, like two more months. If you if you you're a fan of here, uh, my hero academia, and you like puzzle games, because this is basically like Bejeweled. But yeah. Mm, that does sound I'm like interested. Fun. Yeah, I'm interested in checking it out more so now. <laughs> and Gary, you had some news as well. Yes, there was a release of. 
the new My Hero Funko Pop. However, it's not the traditional kind. It's My Hero and Sanrio. Uh, so Ooh. it's got yeah, it's got some um, Sanrio characters like Batsumaru. He's dressed as Bakugo. Kuropi is dressed as Froppy. Uh, Pochico is dressed as Deku. My Melody is dressed as Raka. Tuxedo Sam is dressed as Todoroki. And then Hello Kitty is dressed as All Might. So they are pretty darn cute. I got the Bakugo Batsumaru one and the Pochico Deku one. I don't even have like the Bakugo uh, regular Funko Pop. So I'm like, ah, this is good. It's a, like way cuter. <laughs> anyway. Funko Pop seems so busy. Everything seems to have a Funko Pop figure, and now they're doing these crossovers. Yeah, there, there are a ton of them. Yeah, they are working. Cool. So thank you both for sharing uh, your news pieces with us. So moving on, we have no chapter this week. So instead, we are going to be going through a few of our favourite bits and pieces. So we're going to go through our top three and then maybe some honourable mentions of our top three favourite moments throughout the entire series. So if you are an anime-only fan, you will be spoiled for some stuff. But I'm really looking forward to hearing everyone's top moments. I bet they're going to be... I wonder if there'll be any crossovers, because we all like such different things. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But we will start, and we're going to go through everyone's top... Everyone's number three, everyone's number two everyone's number one and then some honorable mentions so marion if you start us off please with your number three moment um okay i had a hard time thinking about these especially because like recently there's been like a really a lot of really good uh stuff like happening um but i also didn't want to be like obvious um so i guess for number three i kind of want to go with sad man's parade with um like you know like twice uh once he like accepts like his power and like uh goes all out to like save all of his comrades and stuff i thought that was a really like powerful moment and like it really like cemented him as like one of my favorites just because like earlier um he was he's like a fun like character to like watch or like read in the manga um just like his quirks and and not not his quirk like his power i mean like his uh his, his like habits and like sensibilities and how he interacts with people like it's he's a fun guy but then like seeing him go like this extra step to like really like hammer home like how much he cares about uh the people who are close to him like i respect that a lot and yeah he's mm-hmm. one of my favorite characters now that is a very good one it, but he kind of took him from like he was he was kind of a comic character mm-hmm. before that he was I forgot what it's called but um it made him very serious and it like shifted the tone of the whole series yeah C- comedic relief you mean there we go com- comedic relief. <laughs> yes, yeah thank you. yeah i agree with that and then like after that i think the guidebook came out and ranks him as like an s-tier villain which you can see why now and yeah he's pr- he's pretty good I like him a lot. He deserves that S rank. Oh, yeah. So, James, what is your number three, please? My number three moment's kind of a sad moment in the series, but I want to say it was Night Eye's death. Mm. Just because it really hit me hard, personally. <laughs> but, um, oh, what else I could say about it was, um, you know, the bit where uh kind of reads muriel's future yeah and yeah i don't know that's just one i picked that i liked but yeah yeah well the time when he maybe read his future who knows yeah that's the one thing we don't know but it was a really good moment he's like your future is bright you're gonna be the greatest hero and i was like oh it was like a turning it was like a turning point for the series though because we hadn't had a main character or I don't think we'd had any characters that we'd seen so much actually die and to have him as a like a hero die it kind of shifted the tone well mm. like there's a lot of series where characters d- 
don't die. And I'm sure people know the ones I'm talking about. Or you'll think they'll die and then they'll turn yeah. up later on and be like, oh, hello, I just fell down a hole. <laughs> like, oh, I was miraculously healed. Off screen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was really thrown off uh, because like I was like half not really expecting it. Uh, up to this point, I was I had been thinking that uh, the first person to like for for like the good the good guys to die would probably be like All Might. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like out of nowhere, it's like no, it's actually All Might's sidekick or like former sidekick, and like that was like unexpected for me. But uh, the way it was handled was like really really good. Um, like Muriel is probably Muriel and Night Eye and like their relationship is like one of the highlights for me for like overhaul arc. Mm-hmm. I will say I did I did like Night Eye more in the anime than when I did in the manga, so I felt more of a real connection to Night Eye whenever season four came out. He's a good voice actor. Mm-hmm. He, I think he's like Mustang in Brotherhood. Oh, okay. He's Gen in Doctor Stone. Like I, <laughs> I, I absolutely love him, man. He's so good. Oh, Gary. Gen. Anyway, Gary. sorry. I'm sorry, Gary. What's your number three? My number three moment is Hitoshi Shinzo's backstory. Hmm. Yeah. Not, not a surprise. <laughs> nah, I know. Well, it's it, like it was kind of at the time it was a surprise to me because I had watched the anime before I had read the manga. And it was like, ah, okay, I mean, I get it. But then I rewatched the anime in the English dub. And the voice actor for Shinzo, his name is Jared Green. But there was something about his performance that really struck a chord with me. And I don't know who's going to judge me for this, but I like totally cried because I, 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 I related so heavily to the character where I, I had never really thought about it in that way before. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so it is a moment that means a lot. Um, so if anybody uh, disagrees, just don't tell me. So I... <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to no. DM me. I'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and, I don't know. That's my spiel. Yeah, I don't think no one can judge you for that because Shins, I think a lot of people felt the same because he, bearing in mind at that point, to be fair, he was he's not in the story for very long. And the, when you look at it in comparison to the size of the arcs now, the sports arc was very short and Shinzo was only in like a small part, but he really resonated with people. And when the man that he came out in the manga then, he got more popular. And then when people saw him in the anime, they just went mad for him. And he went to like top 10 character polls. So he definitely resonated with a lot of people for him to get so popular. So I don't think you're in the minority. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It's deserved. And hopefully we'll see more of him. Yeah, I I hope so. Yeah. It's like I don't want the school to end or anything before he or the series to end before he gets a chance to be a part of the hero training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He deserves it. Yeah. All so- of your yeah, so all of your t- <laughs> number three was so much better than the one I picked because I thought of my top three moments like really quickly and I was like, oh, it's them, and I maybe should have put more thought into it. But the one I really liked, and it's just because of one panel, it's in chapter 102. And it is so small, most people have probably forgotten about it. And I think the reason I like it so much is the art. And it's when um, it, when Ochako is being asked by uh, Mina about like who she has a crush on. She's like, oh, it's either Izuku or it's Ida. And Iraq gets really embarrassed and she floats up into the air and she goes upside down and then she sees Izuku from the out from like outside in the window and he's practicing with his notebook. And I love that moment. And it's a very like no one probably this is one where people probably won't agree what that I like it so much. But I think the art in the manga for it was just so beautiful. The way he put the bubbles in and then she goes for the whole her whole her whole tone shifts and it's a really small thing to pick as a moment because it's mostly just one panel but it was really 
beautiful. So that's my top three. That's my uh, number three. I think that's fine. Because uh, a lot of uh, what makes like manga really fun to read is like the art. The art is half of it. And uh, I, I can agree. Like I, I, I can like picture the moment, even though it's been so long since I read it. But like, it was really subtle. Like the way her expression changes after seeing uh, like Deku training, because in a way like that's like she's seeing like what was like uh the reason that she basically got attracted to him because he's so like earnest and like straightforward in the way that um he tries to like better himself yeah i think it's a really nice portrayal of like a young teenage cross it's not like annoying sakura's crush on sasuke where she's like this is so handsome all the time it's just Uh... so handsome and sad i love it no she actually likes his personality and she not just likes it, she really admires it. But that's my number three. So Marion, what's your number two, please? Uh my number two is uh after Bakugo is kidnapped and he's being like not like interrogated, but like he's in like the villain hideout, uh the League of Villain hideout and uh Shigaraki is trying to like tempt him to the dark side, but uh as soon as like uh he's like unshackled bakugo just goes over like uh like no leave me alone i i want to win like all might no matter what anyone (laughs) says that's never going to change and it's just like i remember like my first impression of bakugo was not the 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 nicest and i'm sure for most people that is, is the same case but like this marks a shift in like how i view him as a character and it's like he does some really like messed up stuff and he he like veers the line towards being like irredeemable in the way that he like treats other people but this shows that like he's still he's still a kid and he is like the reason that he wants to be a hero is for like one of like the purest reasons ever it's just like he looks up to all might in the same way that deku does and uh I remember when, like, this whole arc was happening and people were speculating, like, oh, my God, is Bakugo going to be a villain? Because he has, like, his power can be, like, easily used for, like, destruction and or, like, uh, he already has, like, a really nasty temperament or whatever. But, like, uh, I find it really poetic seeing uh, characters who are, like, not stuck, but, like, almost, like, shafted into a specific role uh, in a story just because of, like, the way they are. But they struggle to, like, fight against it and, like, uh, do what they really want to. So, like, this is, this is like, why I started respecting, like, Bakugo as a character. Uh, because he's really, like, he has the same level of, like, determination and, like, uh, willingness to, like, keep up with his ideals that Deku does. And that's what makes their, like, rivalry once... Uh, they have that little like fight or whatever in the in after like at the dorms or I think um, where they actually like acknowledge each other as rivals. That's where it like I feel like that's where their like rivalry actually starts. And that couldn't have happened without like uh, this moment where Bakugo affirms that like, no, I want to be a hero. There's a reason for that. And you can't take that away from me. Yeah, it. <sighs> I keep saying that everyone's moments changed the series, but I feel like they all did a little bit. And I think, except for mine, actually, mine didn't. But I think this (laughs) one did because everyone before that thought, oh, it's going to be like a stereotypical shonen. It's going to be like Izuku's number one, like Izuku's friend turns turned rival, then goes over to be a villain. And Izuku's got to change his heart and win him back. (laughs) It's like, no. Bakugo's going to be Sasuke. Yeah. But no, he didn't. He stayed and he does genuinely want to be a hero. And I think at the time, like no one thought that. Everyone was like, yep, he's going to be a villain. Oh, it's so it's so predictable to the point where people were making vill- like videos mm-hmm. saying that that's what was going to happen. But just that that was, seemed to be everyone's speculation. And so then for it to like subvert that was really good. Mm-hmm. James, what's your number two? All right. This one I actually had to think about, but I would say when... It's kind of a basic choice, but it's basically when Deku fights muscular. Mm. One million percent. 
Yeah, besides that, one million percent part is really cool, but like the fact that he just where's that that moment when he was getting crushed and he's like, I'm sorry, mom. Oh yeah. It's just so like oh my goodness. I couldn't keep my promise or something. Yeah, I was I was rereading it and I was just thinking about how like even Coda stepped in and helped and like he did the little water splash to stop uh, <laughs> muscular and that actually helped Deku out for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But it's just a really I mean besides just being a really good fight, it's just a good scene overall. It, it really like it really okay. like built up the uh the tension and like using the tension for like the emotional climax for it. Mhm. Yeah. yeah. Very good fight. And Gary, what's your number two? Mine is from chapter 201. It is... Everybody knew I was going to have a Yayo Rosa here. <laughs> uh, but this it's where she uh, has Kendo bound, creates the cannon, and uh, oh, yeah. the little care package for her team, the Yayo Rosa lucky bag. Um, <laughs> that moment, we've already seen like glimpses of Yayoruzu, Yayoruzu being a leader. Um, but for me, this really impressed me because she did it from a long distance and was still able to um, help her team and guide her team without physically being there because they really did need her direction. And it kind of. I really appreciate that about her, that she is so um, ingenuitive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's about it. Like, I liked her already as my favorite, but like, and I I drink in any Momo moment that we can get, as long as it's not like too perverted or anything. But I still like uh, my respect deepened for her as a character and the ability that Horikoshi had in um, in in writing her as a as as a character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like that uh, because up to this point, like part of her journey was the fact that like she's not really like as confident as uh, some of her other classmates, but then uh, with the whole, like, canon and doing the the goodie bag or whatever it was called, like, um, you see, like, uh, like, hints of her, like, coming into her own because she, she has, she has the, the brains for, like, strategy, but also to be able to, like, direct and support uh, the people on her team, like, I think that's really, like, it's a really understated way of showing, like, how, how much more capable she's become. And yeah, like she definitely shot up my my favorite characters after that moment too. Cool. Um, so my number two is Marion's number three, <laughs> the Sad Man's Parade. And I just when I read it, I couldn't stop rereading it. I was like, is this really happening? And after after Toga's fight, which was really when she killed curious and those other people that was really bloody but i didn't expect anyone to do what twice did and just take out so many people that panel where it was everyone coming at him and then he just just like he just made so many oh just so many clones and then after that it was just like a a constant onslaught of death <laughs> But I think Sandman's Parade really started it. And I was like, what? What is this? So that's my number two. I... Whenever I hear it, I think of the My Chemical Romance song, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, Ooh. This is a sad parade. All right, so now we've got to everyone's number one, the big moments. So, Marion, what is your top number one moment of all time for My Hero Academia? All right, uh, it might sound weird, but, like, um, it's, like, my favorite is actually from a recent chapter. I forgot which one exactly, but it was when um, Shigaraki, uh, 
looks over at Eraserhead and he's just he he calls back to a line that he said back during the the USJ arc where he's like you really are a pretty cool Eraserhead and like that was like something about that just like really clicked with me cuz like Eraserhead is obviously like one of the one of the most like prominent characters and like He's been around from the start uh, as, like, a teacher and mentor for everyone. Uh, and we get, like, cool fight scenes and stuff with him. But, like, when you get, like, an acknowledgement from, like, the super big bad who is, like, uh, like the most threatening presence in the whole series at this point. Uh, and it's, like, it calls back to, like, uh, uh, when Shigaraki wasn't, like, the way he is now. And he, the way that he's, like, evolved as like a villain uh and he still hasn't really like fundamentally changed uh in his like ideals or lack of them um i think that that that's like it's really neat to see just how this the series has like evolved over time but also um you could take it as like a step marker of like look at all the stuff that's happened uh between these two moments and like I don't know. It, it put the series in perspective to me just because, like, I'm sure, like, uh, most of us have been, like, really enjoying, like, this arc and, like, how uh, it, it feels like a lot of the the stuff that's been building up in the back burner for, like, all these years is finally, like, coming to the surface with, um, like, Shigaraki being, like, the successor for All for One and, like, how his, like, like faded like uh rivalry with uh izuku is gonna like come to a head and stuff like i don't know it just it put the series in perspective to me after like a long time of me just kind of like enjoying it but also kind of just like coasting like taking it in as as a as it's been going on so yeah really are pretty cool racer head yeah that was only a few chapters ago it was 275 yeah. That was a really good moment, and especially since we just had the loud cloud flashback as well, well flashback as well, it made more of an impact, I think. Yeah. Like knowing all the stuff that uh Eraserhead has gone through and like uh his his experiences have like shaped him being like a teacher and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's Ooh. good stuff. So, James, what is your number one? Mine's a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, it is the 1A's uh, school festival performance. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm sorry, it's so Wait, good. 1A, not 1B. Okay, 1B's is pretty good. <laughs> the anime really did that whole scene justice, just because I've, you know, for a while I've talked about how in the in the manga, you know, he did, uh, Horikoshi didn't have time to finish that chapter and it still came out and it was like all just like drafts and i think they did fix it in the volume release but whenever they came to the anime oh my goodness it was so good even when like bakugo kind of like it's all silent and bakugo's like we'll kill him with our sound (laughs) (laughs) it has to be so extra but i mean besides the singing was amazing you know the students dancing and ida's dance was also the best part of that (laughs) but um, the main takeaway is, you know, when we see that uh, Chisaki's shadow over Eri gets kind of blown away with the song, and I thought that was really nice that. and positive. It was really good, and I listen to the song pretty often, too, so. But, yep. Wasn't, um, I think the singer who was, like, singing for, for Kyoka, the same one who did the song for Dr. Stone? Like that insert song. Was it Chrissy with, Costanza? Uh, maybe. I'm no, not that's, sure. That's the that's the singer that sung on uh the Hero Two song. But mm. I'm not yeah, sure I thought, if I, that was the I same. Thought, yeah, I thought uh I heard people saying it might have been the same person. I don't I wasn't sure. It was the one and only Lillian Weinberg. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 but no, it's just such a good moment. I just I fell in love with that moment. It was worth the the wait and everything to watch that scene. Definitely. Cool. Gary, what's your number one? Uh, my number one, to me, is the 
ultimate moment of the manga so far um, and anime. But it is Mirio sacrificing himself so that Eri won't have to be in pain ever again. So when he dives in front uh, of him, the bullet, oh my lord. I'm getting sad again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but uh, he already he already and he did it with a smile. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like in the, the way they animated that, I know a lot of people were like upset about the fight between him and uh, Overhaul. But that moment where he like swoops in, and what she sees is just him smiling. Oh man, that really hits me. Uh, he's my third favorite character, but still, I mean, you can't deny this moment here. It's so good. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It was pretty sad that he lost his power though because to me he he's a far better character than Deku and I I know that a lot of people feel that way and I don't want to be like you know opinionated or anything but man uh, uh, Mario's character is good honestly yeah. yeah he puts in the same amount of work that um Deku has been like doing behind the scenes like mm-hmm. they 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 have like similar kind of like backgrounds where it's like um instead of just having like no work no quirk uh Muriel, muriel's quirk was like basically unusable he had to like work really hard to make it like mm-hmm. into what it is today yeah i i have faith that we'll see mario that we'll see uh, mirio make a comeback mm-hmm. yeah i would like that because like he's been relegated to like hey i'm looking after airy which you know yeah. it's nice to see him on occasion but i'd like to see him involved in something somehow but i think that's a good thing i think it's a sign that he's like horikoshi still got him in his mind like if he yeah. was going to do nothing he was if he didn't plan for Miro to come back i'm sure he that would have been mentioned or we just wouldn't see him again that's true. That might be right. me rationalizing in my mind that he's going to come right. back, but like, I really... It would I'm be flying the, that flag. <laughs> it would be, like, impossible for him not to utilize such a popular or, like, main character, you know, for his arc anyway. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I hold out hope. Um, and my top number one moment is the best moment of the series. You're all wrong. <laughs> All of your number ones oh are wrong. The best not top moment of the series is Aoyama and his cheese. Oh my god. Oh, how could I when he, it? Oh, when he puts the cheese down, saying that he knows, and Izuku looks out and that like shock on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone being like, oh, it's Aoyama, it's Cheese Boy, he's the traitor, oh, he's the real villain. Because of his cheese. So unexpected. Oh, no. It's just like no. the waves, like cheese. <laughs> oh. And one of one of the bits of cheese are shaped into a star, but people are still like, oh my god. <laughs> and it was, oh, it was so good. The whole, the whole thing. And then when the next day, when Izuku gets really freaked out because Aoyama tries to like force feed him cheese again. <laughs> <laughs> like a big old block of cheese. <laughs> yeah. And then the whole thing culminates with really Aoyama just wanted to be his friend. So he writes him like a friendship note in rock with his belly button and then poos himself. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Oh, the, those, few, those few chapters. By far my favourite moments of the series. And something would have to be so good to top that. I don't think it, anything has really topped that. <laughs> no, I, that might, it might be my favorite manga moment, of all manga ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It was sorely needed that kind of uh, comedic relief. Yeah. Yeah. But that's my number one and the correct number one. <laughs> I'm not but... even mad. <laughs> I, w- I do want to mention too, Kendra gave us her top three. Okay, so number three is when they saved Bakugo by flying over the bad guys. Mm. So, yeah, was that Camp Camino? Is that what that was? Camino, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, she felt that was smart. And I agree. That was pretty iconic, and plus Momo was there. So, uh, 
two thumbs up there. <laughs> that would have been my number three if I didn't have the like the actual the the confrontation with him and the and the villains. Because mm-hmm. yeah. I, I thought that that teamwork was really really special. Yeah, I like both of those moments were pretty iconic. So yeah, I approve. Number two is eat this. So it's funny because <laughs> it's funny, iconic, and later kind of sad passing on Quirk with blood and dying implied. But anyway. <laughs> oh, with the with all my terror. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I like when um, Deku kind of repeated it and did the All Might face. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Okay, so number one is the fight between Bakugo and Deku, where Bakugo says, it's your power, isn't it? And the other captured why she loves Deku. Okay. That was a really good moment, but I'm shocked she has no Kirishima on her top three moments. That's true, because the fight, and this will get into the... Um, honorable mention part but like the fight between him and Rafa is one of the best parts of the series one of the best fights I'd say uh in the anime it wasn't as good as the manga I felt but still it was good which fight again uh Rafa and in fact um, oh yeah Rafa Rafa the Rafa yeah and (laughs) and to like uh, tying that into the whole where he was afraid to like uh, Gigantomachia when Mina was fine with it and those other incidents where she was fine, like tying that all together like it's like a perfect little Kirishima package. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. such a good flashback. Yeah. Did we want to get, should we get into honorable mentions now? Yeah. So the first honorable mention that I'd like to men- that I'd like to talk about is uh, chapter two hundred and eight, where we sit- we we spoke about Bakugo a lot, but where he saves Jiro. But that isn't my favorite moment. That's just the chapter. My favorite moment is the just one line where he breaks out of the welding and he just storms up and goes, "No one welds me and gets away with it." <laughs> <laughs> I just found it so funny, and I don't know why, but even now when I look back on it, like, eat this is a really funny moment, but no one welds me and gets away with it. It's just, I find it so funny. Like, Bakugo just had such a good, like, a good moment where he saved someone, and then he's like, no, I got all welded. Um, Another Bakugo moment that's one of my favourite moments isn't really a Bakugo moment, it's an Alzawa moment. But when we're seeing him in the press conference with um, oh, uh, the guy that's got the blood quirk and the um, bulldog as a pet. Vlad? Yes. Yeah, when him and Vlad are having the press conference and Azawa's got his hair tied up and people are like, oh, but we've seen Bakugo's behaviour. What if he goes over to the villains? And as I was like sticking up for him, he's like, "No, if you if you that's what you got out of watching back ago, then you are sorely mistaken." And I loved that because he was like, so many people, including people in the story, were like, "Back goes the worst. Back goes a villain." But as I kind of saw his behaviour for what it really is, mm-hmm. and I liked that moment. That's, that's a great. good it's one. A, it's a good moment. Yeah, especially later on, just because like at first. I mean, there's no surprise that I didn't like Bakugo, but he's really grown on me. So yeah. that moment just seems a lot better now that I think about it, or think back on it. I love that it was, like, called back on once we had, like, the parent-teacher conferences, and, like, Bakugo's mom was like, thank you for believing in my son. Uh, That was, like, really touching. Because it's yeah. like, yeah, like, the, the least you could, like, want is for... uh like, your child's teacher to actually, like, believe in him. Yeah. And then it was nice to, in the, um, again, it, I think it was, like, last week's chapter where Izuku was, like, the worst that could happen is they take away our beloved teacher. We see that Zawa realizes how much the kids really, like, they really like him. Mm-hmm. So, that like, they were paying just as much, I don't know, like, they care about him as much as, he cares about them to notice like 
Baco's personality underneath his like abhorrent front that he puts on. Right. To see it go full circle, like you were saying, Marion. Yeah, it's because you know he's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real cool guy. No. <laughs> Um, what are everyone else's favorite moments that they were um, like honorable mentions that they want to talk about um one of mine is uh back to the parent teacher conferences when um all might ended up like kneeling to uh Iz- izuku's mom and was like please let me take care of your son or whatever no like uh seeing uh because like all might was like from the start even though he was like a like a figure that Deku looked up to, um, he was more like an idol than like a mentor. Uh, and like in this moment where uh, All Might like prostrates before Deku's mom, it's like he's taking responsibility as like a mentor. And I think this is what makes uh, like their relationship like a lot more solid. Like. Um, the acknowledgement that, like, up to this point, um, Midoriya's mom, like, just didn't really have a real, like, solid idea of what was going on. Mm-hmm. And to, like, clue her in on the fact and, like, like getting her, like, blessing to, like, continue is something that Izuku would have really needed just because of, like, his whole up- upbringing and how um, he's so, like, respectful. But, like, his mom is someone who supported him up to this point and I cannot like picture like him moving on without having like her behind him as well. Yeah. And that moment was a catalyst for some really great, um, all my, as a dad fan art. Right. I think it was after that we got the whole, like sitting on the bench color spread. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, good. Honestly, that was I... kind of the same one I had. <laughs> oh, my bad. I sniped you. No, that's okay. <laughs> but Sorry, go ahead, Gary. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, I have two, and they're both Momo-related, if you can believe it. Uh, one, <laughs> one would be... Uh, we'll start with the one that I mentioned, like, every time we do a top ten, but the Psycho... Or a top three. The Psycho and Telly fight. It's just so... It's so good. I know it's uh, filler and anime only but i don't know it's good <laughs> uh, yeah because it's like one of the few cerebral fights we get because it's always like um we're unlocking an extra five percent of all for one so woo, or all, <laughs> one for all and it's like how exciting is that you know compared to somebody using their brain and taking out like an army of school girls like I, what, what, more, <laughs> what, what more can you ask for here <laughs> An army of school girls. <laughs> We're ready to march, girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that one, and then the other one, like, right before the incident, you know, with the, where Momo takes uh, Izuku, Todoroki, and Ida, on, and Kirishima on a shopping spree and gives them makeovers. Like, you don't get much better than that either. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, I have one more honourable mention that I had completely forgotten about. And I don't know why, because for about a year after this happened, I was obsessed with it and I kept rereading it. And it's in the um, the licence arc when Kaminari, both Bakugo and Kirishima are taken out and Kaminari goes on his little spiel and he's like, you can do what you want, but don't diss my friends. And then he takes out um, Meatballs Man. Oh, yeah. Um, because we only ever saw him as comic relief. And he then showed that he like, he really cares about these people. And it, I just like that spiel. That spiel of, like, don't hurt my friends. Like, don't insult my friends. I'm a sucker for that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, does anyone have any other honorable uh, mentions? Uh, just for me, just like every moment that Weldy is on screen, <laughs> just because I love him, and, getting some representation. <laughs> and the bonus of the where he saves Momo, like because Momo saves. Him. 
but like I love I that moment that, too. <laughs> that's a really good moment, and that like open like I think that made a lot of people really like him. He's mm-hmm. is he the most popular? I think in the last popularity poll, he might have been the most popular, or one of the most popular. I sure hope so. Students. <laughs> yeah, he he is pretty popular. You'd be surprised. I love him. Anyways. <laughs> Oh, so that is the end of our top three favorite um, My Hero moments of all time. This is my hero okay, so this is the second half of um, our episode, and we're going to be going through our top three heroes that could be villains. So it's either they look like they could be villains, like the um, notorious Gang Orca, who was voted <laughs> number one in Japan as being the hero that looks most like a villain, or <laughs> You could just decide you don't like their personality, like I've maybe done. <laughs> <laughs> so to start us off, Marion, who is your number three? Uh, okay. Number three, I want to say, send a Peter. <laughs> if only for the fact that like, I'm not that big a fan of insects, <laughs> and like, I don't know, it's just something about like a like a creepy crawly centipede head over like a guy in a suit. <laughs> He reminds me a little bit, like, design-wise, to, um, I'm blanking on the name, but, uh, the the guy with the, the, with, like, the teleport quirk with, um, he works for Shigaraki. Kurogiri? Kurogiri, yeah, yeah, yeah. He reminds me a little bit, because of, like, the, the fashion sense, but then, like, a weird head. Yeah, uh, that makes sense, and they they're both their bodies are both kind of rectangly. Mm-hmm. I forgot about <laughs> him. That's such a good one. Yeah, I, all of my choices, by the way, are just like appearances wise. <laughs> ah, <Same>. cool. <laughs> James, who is your number three? Okay, so uh, not really appearance wise for this one, more quirk wise, but I picked Power Loader. Even though he doesn't look like one, I just kind of imagine like since his power, he can you can basically dig and mine through the ground. I kind of imagine him as like the underminer from Incredibles. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like being I don't know why I always think of the underminer when I think of Power Loader, but that's what he reminds me of. Mm-hmm. But just basically, just this quirk is just like he can dig through the ground like a mole man, and that would be like the cool villain to yeah. me. And we he do makes you never... fall into trap holes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we do never see his face either, and he has just got that scrawny, like, bent over body that could be seen as, yeah. like, evil and hiding in corners. <laughs> it's also the bane of, uh, uh, oh, what's her name? I can't remember. Hatsumi Mei? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is she the bane? Is he the bane of her He's life? The or bane. Is, she the ba- He's... is she the bane no. of his life? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of imagine now Power Loader being, being being Bane, being like, oh, you just got into uh, costume design. I was born into it, molded by it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. I will yeah. disagree with you. I do think he looks like a villain as well. Like okay. having a crane for a head or whatever it is. It's pretty wild. I don't know what it is. I keep trying to look for a frontal image just because I've, I've worked for construction in years. So it's like I should know what yeah. these objects are. He looks like um like a really skinny guts man from Mega Man. That's good. <laughs> That's a good one. I didn't even think of that. I don't know what he looks like. He just has like a I don't know what kind of head that is. Generic construction head. It's I forget what it's called, but anyways, it's fine. The Scoopy Scoop. It's not yeah, it's basically, it just scoops the dirt up. Triple scoop. Cool. Gary, who's your number three? My number three is Ain't Nothing But Hound Dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Oh, he's, I think of him all the time when I think of Vlad. I get their names confused, but he's such a good character. And when he gets really angry, he just barks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even that part of it, like, you can see him, like, going wild against heroes if you were a villain but yeah the fact, fact that he has to like wear a muggle for any amount of time <laughs> it's, it's, it's very like Hannibal Lecter and all that so oh. I 
Yeah. I see it. He looks so gross when he's drooling. Yeah. Don't we, don't we all? <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Everyone's gone for really scary looking characters and I haven't. My number nope, well, three my number three is Pony. <laughs> what? Because she looks so cute, but she's so mean. She's so catty, but she looks so cute. Oh, she is a villain in disguise. She would, oh, yeah, but she'd be like um Dolores um like Doris Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter, like really cute in pink, loving all the cats, and then she's making children sign things in blood. <laughs> oh yeah. My God. I- I was thinking, like, Killing Eve or whatever, Villanelle. <laughs> mm. Cute interior, mean ex- No, cute exterior, mean interior. Um, I, I just still haven't forgiven her for being mean to Shoju. <laughs> that, that's all it is. But she's my number three. Uh, so, Marion, who's your number two? So, for number two, I'm going to go with fourth kind. Um, because he looks like, um, uh, God, what is his name? The guy from Spider-Man? Um, the Mafia guy. Well, I'm um, going to look uh, mo- Like King? Not King. Kingpin, yeah, Kingpin, but like, Pin, but... if Kingpin, Kingpin did like the fusion dance with like a Machamp. <laughs> and that, that, that sounds pretty evil to me. <laughs> he reminds me of like the Wraith from Mortal Kombat with the forearm. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean. Yeah. I, um, I forgot too, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, he w- he would definitely be an honorable mention on me too. So I I I, I feel it. And doesn't doesn't he have like a Jaws from James Bond kind of? chin going on or jaw yeah he has like a like some kind of like thing on his face uh like around his jaw actually it's it's eerily similar to whatever kind of facial contraption offer one had hmm i'm kidding but yeah (laughs) believe what you will dear viewer or all we do is point out the facts (laughs) Cool. So, James, you're number two? My number two is not interesting because it's basically Centipeter. <laughs> oh, okay. And just because he literally just looks like he could be a villain if he wanted to. <laughs> that is it. Cool. Yeah, I guess my feeling on Centipeter is, like, he reminds me of, like, Looney Tunes or, like, the Bonkers cartoon, just, like, really goofy with, like, the white <laughs> Disney gloves. <laughs> also, yeah, speaking of that, I forgot to mention, too, that in the English dub, they give him, like, a, a pitched voice, and I didn't like it at all. And he just had, like, a normal voice in the sub, if I remember, in the original. In the original voice. Yeah. It was just normal. And I was like, why would you do that? Make him sound creepy. But that's all I have to say about Centipeter. Cool. Gary? My number two choice is another teacher, Snipe. Oh. Yeah, so the mask that he wears is definitely spooky. <laughs> and, the, and, and even, like, the power like of being able to sharpshoot, hit your target well with a gun is pretty... Uh, who uses guns? Bad people. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't guns wow. illegal in Japan anyway? Most, I think, yeah, I think some hunting guns are illegal, though. You have to take a test to have a gun, but it's a very, very difficult test to pass. Yeah, that's about it. Cool. I'm hoping that your number one is going to be like Exoplasm, and then you'll just have a whole number three teachers. <laughs> I feel called Jake. out right now. I feel called Jake. out too. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> See, I realized that I've made my whole top three list is all women. 
and I shouldn't be, and now I feel sexist, so I feel like I have to change them. <laughs> but I'm not going to. So I was trying to think of like a a female character, like, but I didn't. They didn't trump the guys, so anyway. Yeah, no, my mine are all women, um, and my number two is Miss Joke. Oh. Because Miss like black she's, humor. Yes, she looks too. I don't trust it. She's trying to make everyone laugh all the time. That is a villainous thing to do. <laughs> Take someone out while they're laughing, or make them wet themselves from laughter. No, I don't trust it. I think she could be a villain in disguise. Lower well, your guard. The most famous, like, comedian villain is the Joker. You know, she's not far off from that. Yeah. I don't know. I just think she'd make a good villain. That I think her power would make for a good villain because you wouldn't necessarily expect it. But I'm mm-hmm. going to say I, ex- I would expect it. But oh, my number three list is terrible compared to everyone else's. <laughs> I find it unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, on to our number one. I was well, going to try to do a drum roll, but I... I think I would fill out it anyways. There you go. Um, and now my fingers hurt. <laughs> <laughs> my number oh, one my is... Oh. Well, oh. well, my number one is ectoplasm. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He obviously like he looks like Spawn, which is like an anti-hero, but like Spawn's design was based off of like like evil characters and like kind of like really edgy kind of like that kind of appeal or whatever. And just like the fact that he's in like a trench coat, like trench co- trench coats are like inherently like untrustable. Yeah. You're either a detective, a villain, or you're going to um show everyone your bits. Right? Flasher. There we go. You're going to be a flasher. <laughs> Maybe he is. Oh, God. I mean, he's also a maths teacher, so I personally think that's pretty <laughs> scary. I'm sure there's art of that, though. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible. Not the maths teacher just, part, but... I was like, his design is very, like, suspicious. <laughs> and also, if you look at his character appearance, he doesn't have actual feet. He just has, like, stumps for legs. <laughs> I saw that too. I was like, wait, why? <laughs> no, really? Yeah, I just have... looked at his character appearance when I was researching him too, and I was just like, <laughs> he has stumps for legs. Oh, wow, he does. <laughs> How does he balance his weight? He must have a really impressive claw. Oh, well, apparently, yeah, apparently he says he, it had their prosthetic legs. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Mm. <laughs> um, apparently apparently his appearance may have been based off one of the guys from Daft Punk <laughs> wait what <laughs> if you go to the trivia on the My Hero Wiki <laughs> what is it? maybe he was based off of Spawn I don't know why that's, that's so weird. weird Ectoplasm's appearance may have been based off the appearance of Guy Manuel de Ong Cristo of Daft Punk <laughs> the helmets are both golden with the face sides and top a- of the head being receded in solid black. I'm, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna edit this article. I don't like that idea. <laughs> I don't care if it's true or not. <laughs> James, do you want to shock us with your number one? Actually, I did pick a different one just now. <laughs> because I was like, but I did pick ectoplasm at first. No surprise there. But um, I just thought about this. But uh, Nezu, even though he's Ooh. cute and little, just because it's like. You saw how crazy he acted that one time. He has probable cause, too. He was tortured yeah, by he, human. He has a reason. But just the way he was acting with his brain operating skills and just like, ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I was like, he could be evil if he wanted to. Everyone can be a villain with enough caffeine. <laughs> yeah. That's basically it. Besides, you would not suspect a cute little rat character to be the villain. True. The mastermind. Mm-hmm. Plus, he's very smart, so, like, he could be very cerebral. Yeah. Cool. And, Gary, your number one? My number one would be ecto- <laughs> Ectoplasm as well. Is that oh, him? Is that Ectoplasm? 
Yeah, I posted in the chat ectoplasm out of uniform. <laughs> that looks scary. It's very disturbing. He looks it's like, like a normal man. guy. Yeah, he's really thin. He looks like um, kind of like Sir Night Eye, but like a little uh, preppier. Toothier. Like, vest. <laughs> Sir, yeah. Sir yeah. Night Eye had no mouth or gums. Yeah. <laughs> like Jose Honanuke. Yeah, yeah but Jose Honanuke doesn't look scary. He looks great. Oh, I mean, he he does look. If you didn't know his personality and you saw him walking, just walking down the road, I'd say he looks pretty scary. Yeah, especially in, okay, in I'll a, give you that. Yeah, in our society, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, he kind of looks like what. Well, um, in his civilian clothes, he kind of looks like he's like half a Muppet. I don't know. It's, it's, I see it with like the a, the mouth flap. Yeah, kind of. right. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's disconcerting at best. But yeah, like, and and I will. I'm just imagining that, Frank Oz voicing ectoplasm now. I just <laughs> can't get that out of my mind. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, I like do appreciate about the series that the like the villains like pretty much all the villains look like villains and they're like really grotesque in some way but the fact that some heroes have grotesque designs as well um i'm behind my own i will say like female character wise like it's like if you're a female hero you are you're you can only look sexy that's like your only option so that's kind of annoying but i do like the diversity with some of the heroes here. Yeah, that's what I like about Miss Joke's design. Because she that's looks true. more, like, casual. Yeah. That's, that's true. And the Wild Wild Pussycats, too, you know, they're slightly sexy, but not as bad as some of the others. Mm-hmm. It's a shame that um, Toga's friend from school, who we only saw, like, in the manga, um, Mongoose with the snake head, that we haven't seen, like, yeah. any bits oh, of her. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. she her design's pretty cool. That's uh, Froppy's friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you said CW. Toga. No, oh, no. did I? It's oh, okay. bad I, Sophie. I know what she <laughs> but I was, yeah, she was like she's an honorable mention for me. Like mm-hmm. she, she, I, 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 I limited it to heroes and specifically, I guess, teachers too, unintentionally. But um, yeah, she would be on the list too. Gary, you like know a... what I just thought of when you brought uh, up like. That ectoplasm kind of looks like a Muppet. Oh. <laughs> I thought of like you know like the evil Kermit meme, except Uh-oh. like <laughs> with like like uh those like fake like teeth like photoshopped in. Yeah. No, th- that was actually in the movie. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to remember that. In the... <laughs> it was in the uh, most wanted. Yeah. God, <laughs> that's so unsettling. Yeah. That no, should my, be the one episode of... image. One of my one of my very good friends like was like traumatized by this the the Kermit with the uh met, metal teeth. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sophie, what is your number? I was one like choice? enough Muppet talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've changed my number one because I feel bad. I feel like I've been too sexist and I've just picked characters I don't really like. Um. Oh, wait, who have I picked? Uh, I haven't... Pony and Miss Choke. <sighs> right, so I was going to put Burning as my number one. Oh. Burning, just, I, don't, I don't trust the green fire hair. Um, and then I was like, no, I have to change it to um, Shishido, who actually is the, like, the lion-looking hero, pro hero who also wears a muzzle. Yeah. But um, I'm going to go back to choosing characters that I think could actually be hero, be villains. And I'm going to choose Mushroom. Another girl? (laughs) Yep, another girl. Because I'm sexist. (laughs) Apparently. No, that is a good one. Just because, like, um, I I recently finished Doro He Doro. And I just think it's like, what if, like, Mushroom Girl had, like, Anne's powers would be really scary. Yeah. But she. (laughs) 
she hides her face she hides her personality we don't we didn't know how scheming she was she put um mushrooms in tokiyami's lungs i mean she apologized it apologized for it afterwards but i mean i'm not a fan of that hey sorry for nearly killing you yeah (laughs) And she's like, she's got that like tiny I could hide in your cupboard and you wouldn't know I was here vibe. <laughs> she's but a yeah, she's shop. yeah, <laughs> she's tiny, but she's got that massive hair. It hides her eyes, and it's the hiding the eyes bit that I don't trust. If you can't see someone's eyes, room. yes. If you can't see someone's eyes, you don't know what they're doing or how they're feeling. The mushroom is my number one. You know, I will add. Like even when she apologized to Tokiyami, it was it wasn't so much that she was sorry for what she did, but it was because she didn't like using the spores because they're not cute. <laughs> no, she's my number one, and I'm not going back on it. She deserves to be num- my number one. I just felt bad for putting all women in my top three, but <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. We put all men, so it's all right. Um, I will add. That when I was thinking about the fight uh, where Momo um, assisted her team from beyond, like, uh, Kamori was just, like, she was, like, god level in her, in in that fight. Like, it was ridiculous how powerful she was with those mushrooms. Mm -hmm. It was frightening. Yeah. Okay, I do want to add... Kendra's quick before we do the uh, honorable mention. So her number three was Edshot. And along with that, don't trust ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I agree, because he's got like a darker color scheme. Like I, he's not as like ectoplasmy scary, but he, yeah, I can see that. The number His two power was, is scary. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Actually, I think number... Wait a minute. Oh, that must be an honorable. That's number four. Number three is Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, he was just he was just in the films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in the... Um, what was that? Two Heroes? Yeah. Or whatever the first one was. Uh, yeah, he is legit Godzilla, she says. Serious. And then number two is Gang Orca. We all, like, sidestep. But yeah. yeah, we we know he's, he's, he's spooky. He's the one that reminds me of Kingpin, though. Like I feel like that's got to be an inspiration. That's true. He has gang in the name. That is that that is true too. And then number one oh, is that made me think of another top moment that I forgot about, where he's throwing the kids out and he says to Shoto, like, "You're poo. How could you ever help anyone?" And he was like, "As fertilizer." <laughs> <laughs> trying to give an honest reply. <laughs> yeah, that was great. And her number one was sent to Peter, which we've kind of covered ad nauseum. So he might be uh, one of the top creepiest then. Oh. We're sorry to all the bug lovers out there. Yeah. Imagine if they made a cockroach. Per- if Horikoshi made a cockroach person. I I don't I don't know that he needs to with like how much Santa Peter looks like one almost um yeah let's get into some honorable mentions uh i was actually gonna say like edshot was like an honorable mention for me because like yeah like his power is like kind of scary i feel like you could easily like kill someone if you like do what he does and like fold himself up and like go into someone's body and then just like expand like Mm -hmm. that sounds terrifying Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like he doesn't he like incapacitate people by like puncturing their lungs and stuff. That's really that's wild. That is very wild. <laughs> and um, um oh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say like I wonder if uh depending on if this is like possible or not. I feel like um God I I forgot her name uh. The, the nurse lady. <laughs> oh, recovery girl. Recovery girl. If recovery girl was like, 
if she could possibly like uh besides like giving people like energy and healing them if she could like suck out their life energy that'd be like scary as fuck she could make like a crazy villain if she, if she had that kind of power how dare you <laughs> uh-oh how very dare you <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> Uh, for all we know, that that's not even possible. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it it could well be. <laughs> um, for honorable mentions, I know that there's quite a few students. Like it maybe if you didn't know Coda, you'd think maybe he could be scary, but I don't think he could because he's just got a rock face with mm-hmm. odd hair and that like his his expressions are always terrified. So I don't think he could be scary. And I know that people always say that Shoji's scary. I don't think he is. I think he just gets cold teeth. I think the truly scariest looking student, and I did put him on my list because I know we know his personality is cute, but Bondo. The one, oh, the guy that's that, someone I did put to on there. Yeah. He shoots like glue out of his face, but his mm-hmm. face is like a wicker basket face. Looks like a scarecrow. Yeah, he looks like a scarecrow. I'm going to put. And then he's got that at the top. It's like a spike that's bent. Mm-hmm. He I looks think, like a golem. Yeah. Yeah, I think he looks scarier than Jozu Hononuke and his teeth lips. <laughs> but I can also, see that. Yeah, but then also in Class 1B, they've got um, oh, Very razor teeth, toe... Toguru. Yeah, he's, the mantis guy. Yeah, they've got mantis, but I don't think he's scary looking. I mean, he's a very nice shade of green. And he's got that cool mohawk. How can you be scared of anyone such a cool mohawk? I was going to bring it back to Muppets, and I was like, what was that one song that Kermit said? <laughs> but, uh, no more sorry. Muppets. <laughs> oh, who's everyone else's honorable mentions? From Class 1B folks, uh, Vanta Black, even, even Tetsu, 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 like, <laughs> like um, I don't know, he can look pretty scary when he's intense. But then probably the main one there, I would say, would be Reiko Yanagi. So Emily is her code name. She's like the ghosty one, like the poltergeist one. Mm-hmm. I think she's got a little spookage to her. And I want to mention, like, Tokoyami, too. Like, I'm surprised we didn't mention it. True. He, all his all his attack names are, like, darkness. Like, yeah. Very, very edgy. Yeah. Revelry in the dark, or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> Revelry in the dark. <laughs> but he, I think his height makes it more obvious that he's a teenager. Mm-hmm. So I think if I were to see him in the street, I'd just be like, oh, sad teenage baby. <laughs> With bird head baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh and, y'all saw the the horikoshi doodle with like all, everyone has like really derpy faces and, oh with uh, yeah yeah with Mirko and then like Tokoyami's is like like a triangle with two eyes <laughs> yeah <on. laughs> so cute and I think I have one more and that would be Crimson Riot ooh <laughs> yeah so that's uh, Kirishima's idol. Yeah, but he I does have... His mouth is, like, hidden by what looks like a metal muzzle thing. Yeah. And, like, he is shrouded in, like, mystery because we don't really ever get a clear shot of him. Well, yeah. Maybe we do. I guess he was on a TV show and we got a little <laughs> shot of him. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, that's who I would pick for honorable. I would have one for honorable, and that's even though I love her, it's Ragdoll, and it's the eyes. <laughs> I love Ragdoll. I do I love have Ragdoll. The same too, reaction as Gary. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be a shocker, but oh. it's just the eyes. <laughs> yeah. But no, I love her too, so it's fine. I we... forgot about Midnight too, because like that dominatrix thing. That that's that's kind of villainous. Mm-hmm. I have a question. <laughs> um, a slide and go. Is he a villain now? 
I mean, I think... a part of like this, it's like a political movement that are doing bad things. Well, they're yeah. doing really awful things now. I guess he'd be a villain, wouldn't they? Slide and go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, he's his character design. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exlus as well, another one from this arc. I thought about mentioning Exlus, but um, I don't want to talk badly of the deceased. Aww. <laughs> um, and, like, to add that to one of uh, Endeavor's sidekick, Kido, like, the mummy guy. He could be like uh, Kido. Anyway. Yeah. Does anyone have any other honorable mentions? Or dishonorable. Yeah, because no, then I don't want to get hate for it. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> no, Tommy now he's the traitor. No. <laughs> it's fine. We can move on. You can on. say it. Oh, man. I no, we're care. good. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, I hated on all women, so. <laughs> and honestly, they really weren't even heroes. They're, and it's just basically the for- a former villain anyway, so it doesn't really count. Uh, and plus, it's not regular uh, My Hero. It was from Vigilantes. So. Uh, cool. Okay, then that is the end of My Hero Academia podcast, episode 112. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Marion, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at microwavy, the E before the V. And I co-host a whole bunch of other podcasts. Um, if you like Haikyuu, Demon Slayer, uh, Actage, uh all my stuff is like on my Twitter. I have like a new pin tweet with all my projects if you're interested. And I also write on my personal blog, uh, heavensdoorknob.wordpress.com. And for a uh, weekly show Gakugan edition, uh, it's like a weekly Shonen Sunday blog and like mm-hmm. associated. Uh, I wrote a ping pong review and I also wrote uh, later this week, you should see up a new review for Comey Can't Communicate. Uh, which mm-hmm. is a fun uh, slice of life comedy school type of manga. Should be up later this week. Cool. Thank you very much for joining us again. Thank you for inviting me. It's always fun. <laughs> um, and James, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter, no surprise there, at that one Welder Guy. I also have the Kicking Stones podcast, a Dr. Stone manga read-through podcast we just finished the whole sukasa war arc and we're getting into part three sometime next week so that should be fun and as well as the weeb jammin podcast which we will eventually record our samurai shampoo episode so look forward to that and you can follow that on twitter at jammin weeb also it's at dr stone pod for the kicking stones podcast i forgot to mention that <laughs> cool gary where can we find you <laughs> You can find me on Twitter at Wrath of Giraffe. You never promote them, but you also do like pretty much all of um, both of James's podcasts with him as well. Yeah, yes. I'm also on the Weeb Jammin' and Dr. Stone Pod pretty darn regularly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can find Kendra on Twitter at... Um, sniper of my heart and she is also on many of the other podcasts that have been mentioned by james and marion <laughs> um, you can find me on twitter at choppers antlers you can find the podcast at mhapod www.mhapod.com and you can email us at gmail uh, at uh, my hero pod at gmail.com i just realized we had an email that i've forgotten about <laughs> <laughs> we'll read it next week <laughs> Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us. Oh, who's going to think of a round out first? Stay safe out there. We don't know what's cake and what isn't. And go beyond. Plus. Plus. Ultra. 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 <laughs> <laughs>